LiPo batteries are a very important component in the RC hobby. However, they can get very expensive very quickly. But how do you know if what you're buying is potentially really great or just a little bit crap? In today's video, we're going to be finding out. So here we've got a normal 6S LiPo by China Hobby Line. This is one that I've personally bought and used. And over here, we've got another 6S pack, but this one's been made by Turnergy, which has very kindly been sent to me by Hobby King. Now, what's special about this battery is that it's a high voltage one. So what that means is that the voltage per cell is actually higher than a standard LiPo. In addition to that, we've also got a much higher capacity than the China Hobby Line one. So theoretically, this should be a much stronger pack. That being said though, this battery here is twice the price of the China Hobby Line one. Does that mean it's going to be twice as good? Today, we're going to find out. So for the first test, I want to try calculate what the actual capacity of both these packs really is. So I've each got them on their own individual charger, up store has charged them, and now I'm charging them up to full. It is only a rough test, but it will give us a good indication of whether or not these capacities are true. So both batteries have been fully charged, so let's have a look at the results. Now, like I said, this is only a rough test, but with the amount of capacity that was put into this battery with respect to its charge level before, it works out to the capacity of this of being about 5,170 milliamp hours. So it is safe to assume that this CNHL pack is probably a 5200 milliamp hour pack. If we apply the same logic to this battery here, it actually works out to about 9060 milliamp hours, which isn't bad considering the size of the pack, but I would have liked to see maybe a little bit more, maybe around the 9300 milliamp hour range. But then again, we do have to remember that this was just a rough test. So to be honest, pretty decent. For the next test, I want to see how well each cell has been balanced for each battery. So starting with the China Hobby Line, there is a little bit of fluctuation between the cells. Some are a little bit over, some are a little bit under, but to be honest, it's not the worst. Trust me, I have seen a lot worse. Moving on to the high voltage pack now from Turner G. It's the same story. Some are a little bit high, some are a little bit low. To be honest, a little bit more spread than I'd like to see, especially for a brand new battery. But then again, we kind of have to consider that as well, the charger might not be doing a perfect job. Now for a more fun test, a speed run. So we're going to start off with the China Hobby Line one. And when we put the high voltage pack in there, hopefully we get a few more miles an hour. Read 50 on grass. That's quick. Now for the high voltage pack, as you probably noticed, we're running this battery in the max slash and in order for it to fit properly, it fits in the tray perfectly, but to get the lid to close, you do need to raise those little mounts holding the lid on a little bit to get it to close properly. And unfortunately, it took a few more runs than expected to get a decent run in because we did have quite a few dogs chasing the car. Wow, okay, so there is definitely a difference. So as you saw, a nice little increase in performance with the high voltage pack, about what I was expecting as well, so I'm very pleased on that front. And after the speed runs, I ran both packs down just a tiny bit, so then that way I could rerun the charge test, which I did at the beginning of the video. And this time, the China Hobby Line showed to have a capacity of 5,000 milliamp hours, and the high voltage pack actually showed to have a capacity of 9,150 milliamp hours. So a little bit better on that, but like I said at the beginning of the video, guys, it is just a rough test. Now for the final test, I want to see the resistances for each pack. So they're both fully charged, starting with the China Hobby Line one. We want to be looking for about one to two milliamps per cell. 
And as you can see, we get a fairly decent reading with a little bit high for cell number three. But then again, this pack has been used before. Moving on to the high voltage pack, we actually got a perfect reading, six cells at one milliohm. And although it's a new pack, I thought this was a little bit suspicious. So I ran the reading again. And as you can see, something a little bit more realistic. I tried again with a CNHL pack. And as you can see, again, a little bit more realistic. And then one more reading and we got this monstrosity. So to be honest, I take this test with a little pinch of salt. So what's my verdict on this high voltage pack? Is it really worth double the money and twice as good than the China Hobby Line pack? To be honest, it's a little bit early to tell. I haven't run it very much and with live posts, it's kind of a long game. You know, you kind of need to run them consistently and see how they turn out. But so far, I am pretty impressed and it is worth noting that this is kind of twice the battery that the China Hobby Line is. It's a high voltage one. And look at that, the capacity is almost double what the China Hobby Line one is. So if we think about pricing, it kind of does seem fair. But then again, these are batteries which I'd want to run in a basher. And I don't think I'd really want to be spending that much on a battery just for a basher. I think the China Hobby Line one is just perfectly fine. But I don't want to take away from the fact that this still has been a decent pack. It has performed fairly well. So... Is it really worth twice the money of the CNHL one? I'm gonna let you guys decide that. So if you're interested in buying either of these packs, there'll be links in the description to where you can find them. And I just wanna give a massive thank you to Hobby King for giving me the opportunity to try out this battery.